Okay, the mole concept is quite a simple idea, and that is if you've got a hydrogen atom that has one atomic mass unit as its regular mass compared to carbon-12, which has a mass of 12 units, carbon is 12 times as massive as one carbon atom. Well, if that's the case, then two carbon atoms would be 12 times as massive as two hydrogen atoms, or three carbon atoms would be 12 times as massive as three carbon atoms. If that's the case, then we ought to take any ratio of the two masses and be able to compare them and have the same number of particles. For example, on the periodic table, the atomic mass of carbon is 12.0 AMU. The atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0 AMU. Well, let's do something tricky here. Let's say, instead of dealing with an atomic mass units, let's go ahead and calculate it based on the number of grams instead. If I were to weigh out 12.0 grams of carbon and weigh out 1.0 gram of hydrogen using the same logic, wouldn't it make sense that you have the same number of atoms in both of those samples? Just like here, you both have one atom. Here you have some unknown number of atoms, but it's the same. Just like this is both one atom. Well, that number of atoms in 12.0 grams of carbon is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That number of atoms is known as a mole. And the mole, then, is the number of atoms in any of the given atomic masses on the periodic table. For example, if I take 200 grams of mercury, just like I have here, the atomic mass of mercury being 200, the atomic mass of carbon being 12. If 12 grams of carbon has one mole of substance in it, then 200 grams of mercury would also have the same number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd mercury atoms, or one mole of mercury atoms. Now let's use that logic to actually be able to calculate how many particles are present in any sample. If I use, let's say I'm going to use mercury again, and I'm going to say I've got 3.65 grams of Hg, and I want to know how many atoms are present in that. Well, if it was 200 grams of mercury, there would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But since there aren't 200 grams, but there's a fraction of that, we're going to use dimensional analysis to calculate the number of atoms that are present. Draw your brackets. Your destination is question mark atoms, and our conversion factor is 200 grams of mercury is equal to one mole, or one mole of anything, including mercury atoms, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So if I take my calculator for that, I have 3.65 times 6.02 exponent 23 divided by 200, that gives me a total of 1.09 or 1.1 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. Now you have to be very careful there because a lot of people will think, well, one atom of mercury is equal to 200 grams. That's not true. One atom is equal to 200 atomic mass units, but if we're dealing with it in grams, we're dealing with the gram atomic mass, that number of grams contains that many atoms. The mass of one mercury atom, if I were to do that, if I knew that 200 grams of mercury had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, I did that division, that's going to tell me how much the mass of one mercury atom is. Let's go ahead and try that. 200 divided by 6.02 exponent 23. That gives us a mass of 3.3 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams. Now, since it's about impossible for us to measure that out, it's easier to calculate that based on a larger number and a conversion using the mole concept instead because we simply can't measure out that small amount of mass. If you look at the mass of carbon atom, individual carbon atom in grams, not in atomic mass units, we know that it has a mass of 12 AMU if I'm dealing with atomic mass units. But if I take 
and find out the mass of one single carbon atom. We'll take 12 divided by 6.02 exponent 23. That's the number of atoms present in 12 grams. It gives us a mass for carbon. One atom is equal to 1.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They want to calculate and say, well, one carbon atom weighs 12 grams. Not true. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms weighs one gram, but not um, but not 12 grams. Let's try another calculation then. Let's take a certain number of atoms and find out what the mass is instead. If I take 2.65 times 10 to the 24th atoms of any substance, it has a certain number of moles present, and it's safest to go there first and then take from moles to number of grams. If I were to go to moles from there, I have a conversion factor that I know that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd any kind of atoms or molecules or electrons or whatever you're dealing with is equal to one mole. Now, if I'm looking at one mole, that, all that will do is tell me the number of moles present in that sample. It, tells, it doesn't tell me how many grams is there, it only tells me how many moles are there. So, if I go ahead and plug that in with 2.65 exponent 24, divided by the Avogadro number 6.02 exponent 23, I get the number of moles. That's 4.4 moles. Now, let's see if that number of atoms would have a different amount of mass depending on what we were dealing with. If we were dealing with carbon, I would take it and say, well, one mole of carbon is equal to 12.0 grams. So in this case, now we'll both be in the numerator. I'm going to have a multiplication times 12. So that would be 52.8 grams if it were carbon. But if that had been mercury instead, 4.4 moles of mercury, that one mole of mercury's mass from the periodic table is 200 grams, using the gram atomic mass for mercury, I would have I have 880 grams instead. Now recognize again that we have the same number of atoms, but if they have different identities, they're going to be different amounts of mass. Now there's still going to be a ratio of 200 to 12 as far as their masses go because mercury atoms are simply heavier. So it's a way of calculating the mole concept is a way of going to and from moles, atoms, or mass.